and gentlemen, pleasant afternoon to you all. Right to the stand again as we do the opening in praise. I want to invite us all to stand. Begin. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him for He is the of salvation. All you who hear, go into His temple. That adoration is to the Lord who all things so wonders reign and shelter the under things so gently sustain and has thou not all that is as a Until in what he ordained, praise to the Lord who does prosper and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy every day attend thee. What the Almighty can do with His love, He befriend thee. Praise to the Lord who had tempest for warfare awaiting, who had the clamor banded around. Confound thee, shed at his light, turn of night, tainted with mercy. 
Amen. I'm going to invite Raja Palmer to come and do the opening prayer. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's pray. Eternal Father, Lord, as we come before you today, Lord, we come, God, knowing, God, that you are the King of all kings. You are the Lord of all lords. Lord, there is come to you. Lord, as we come, O oh God, to the end of another journey, O oh God, of our life, Lord, we pray, O oh God, Lord, that you, God, will pour out your blessing upon us continuously, O oh God. Lord, we pray, God, that you will order our steps, O oh God. Lord, I pray, God, that you, God, will help us, God, to seek you first in everything, God, that we do, O oh God. Lord, we pray, God, that even as we gather here today, Lord, I pray, God, that you take full charge of today's service. Lord, we pray, God, that everything will be done in decency and in order. Lord, I pray, God, that you take God, for each and every one of us here, stand today, God, as students, oh God. Lord, we pray, God, that you help us, oh God, to acknowledge you. Lord, we pray, God, that you pour out special blessing upon us. Lord, we pray, God, that even as we go, in the world, world, oh God, Lord, you will provide for us, Lord, that you will make way for us, oh God, it seems to be no way, Lord, we pray today, oh God, Lord, that you, God, will go before us, Lord, in charge of today's service, bless each and every one, in Jesus Christ's name we pray, tell you thanks, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. We're going to have well, the first reading, which will come to us from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through to 3. Chapter 1 to 3, verses 1 to 3, remember this. Wherefore, seeing we also with a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which set us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us, he endured the cross. The right hand of the throne of God. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weird and faint in our minds. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Colleen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to, at this moment, invite Mr. Gibbs Williams to come and do a welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Reverend Luke Shaw. Members of the Board of Management, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, valedictorians, 
I want to use this opportunity to welcome you to your very special and auspicious function. I want to welcome Luke Shaw, welcome members of the academic, ancillary, and by extension, all staff members, to the families and friends of the valedictorians, I bid you a GC Foster welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome one and all to this evening's ceremony. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Principal. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are trying to follow the program, I just want to let you know that there is a, a slight adjustment to the program, but I'm sure that you will follow accordingly. All right, so at this time, I'm gonna ask how we prepare ourselves for the item for the group, but in that moment, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to invite the person for the second reading to come now. For the person who should be doing Proverbs chapter 4. Miss Proverbs chapter 4, Clive Rain. We'll be coming to do the second reading. Here he took the instruction of a father and attend unto knowing understanding. For I give you good doctrine, for say he not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only God in the sight of my mother. He taught me that thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, get it not. Neither decline and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dwest embrace her. Nine, she shall give to thee. Sorry, she shall give to thine head an or ornament, shall she deliver to thee. And the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. Twelve, when thou goest, thy steps shall not be strained, straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt. And go in, not in the way of the evil men. Fifteen and from it and pass away. Here in the reading of God's holy word, we can read by saying, Is Candy Thomas? Is she anywhere close? Candy? Are here. All right, I'm just going to invite us to stand. We all know the song, He is here, hallelujah. He is here, amen. He is here, holy, holy. I will bless his name again. 
And following that, we're going to have, as I said, there's an adjustment to the program. So following the singing of that song, the speaker will come to us and then we go back to normal programming. He's here, hallelujah. I'm inviting us to stand. He is here. One more time. We I'd like to acknowledge leading our service this evening, the Vice Principal Paul Beckford, other Vice Principal and members of the board, historians, all family members, members of staff, all who are present here this afternoon, especially invited guests. I'm grateful to be able to share with you this afternoon. And as I share, I must say that I will not be able to stay for the duration of the service, but I am truly happy to be able to share this occasion with you. And I want to take this moment to congratulate 
each of you for having come this far and for the support you've received from your family members who may be present here today. GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport is a great institution and it has so much more potential and even as you prepare to leave these walls, I want to share with you this afternoon with the theme you are emphasizing, pushing past barriers, impacting the world through academics and sports. Pushing past barriers, impacting the world through academics and sports. This is a very relevant theme for our times. It is appropriate because we live in a world which changes rapidly. Today, technology and information may be relevant, but tomorrow something happens which makes it irrelevant. And you have to keep in touch with what is going on or else you'll be left behind. And I want to share this afternoon using the scripture which was read practical insights concerning this theme, pushing past barriers, impacting the world through academics and sport. We need to be aware of current trends in, in sports, information concerning science, and how it may affect sports. We need to have a vision We need to have a vision of where we want to go. And this vision is enriched when we have the wisdom of God in our lives. There are limitless possibilities for each of you as individuals going out there. And there are limitless possibilities for this institution. I just share a little bit from the text which I read. Because in order to have this vision, in order to navigate life, you need wisdom. Wisdom which comes from God. We live in a world today where many persons feel satisfied in their own achievements, accomplishments, their intellectual abilities, their wealth. But at the end of it all, they end up disappointed. True wisdom is knowing how to live life successfully, joyfully, in the midst of all that is happening around us. And the passage from Proverbs tells us that in order to get wisdom, we must work for it. It's not something we have to pay for, but we receive it when we acknowledge God as the source of our being and commit ourselves to Him. We get wisdom, the passage says, from knowing God. We get wisdom when we trust God's ability to provide for us. And we get wisdom when we obey God's will. The writer speaks as if though he's a father speaking to a son. Children, we are encouraged, every single one of us, to get wisdom. Friends, there's a price to pay if you want to know God's truth and obey it. Parents can teach us, our lecturers can impart knowledge to us, you leave with a certificate, but you still don't have wisdom. What do we mean when we say you must work for it? It is not manual labor. It is not something you can pay for, but it is the discipline which you commit yourself to in following God's word for your life. Many today, as I've said, said they don't need God because they've achieved everything in life. But many who have achieved, they have all the wealth in the world, they end up sad. And don't be fooled by what you see other people have. Many of us know of the name of the person who bought out Twitter. What is his name? Who bought Twitter? Elon Musk. He's considered to be the wealthiest in the world. 80 odd billion dollars. But guess what? 
Elon Musk doesn't own cash. So he doesn't pay taxes. He uses his brain. What makes him rich is people like us who buy his products. So when you use Twitter, you are going to pay him now. You have shares. Shares in Tesla, people buy shares. So he doesn't pay taxes because he doesn't use cash. It's believed that he doesn't even own a house, so he doesn't have to pay a tax on it. What he has done is use his brain to make you think that you need his products. And because he has enough money, he can make you believe that. What you must leave here with as you push past the barriers that you must believe in yourself and believe that you have something which other people need. And the same way he can sell himself, you need to sell yourself with the knowledge which you've gained from here. And this is why we say you have to use academics. The knowledge, the scientific knowledge and the skills which you've gained coupled with your various disciplines. Not just or a massage therapist or in the other disciplines which you have studied. But you must be able to utilize that. And why do I say that you could have everything in the world, but you are not happy. Anybody has ever heard about Kodak? There was a point when, if you talk about Kodak, everybody knew what you were talking about. It was the film that was used to develop pictures, founded by George Eastman, and later on, the cameras, you had the Kodak cameras, the instant cameras and all of that. And he made millions of dollars out of it. He was an American entrepreneur. He founded this company, which for years, nobody thought that it would have died. He loved to give, and he helped a number of institutions and organizations. And I just named some of them because I'm trying to make a point to you. He um, established the Eastman School of Music. He established the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. He established a school of dentistry and medicine at the University of Rochester. And in London, Eastman Dental Hospital. He contributed to a number of other institutions and organizations. and some historically black universities. But guess what happened? After all this wealth, after achieving all of this, at the age of 85, he had a birthday party. After everybody had left, they heard a single gunshot. When they went to his room, he killed himself. With all of that, he still had an empty life. He just left a note saying to my friends, my work is done. Why wait? Why? Because he had seeds and eggs and he couldn't bear it. But he didn't know about the massage therapists at GC Foster's yet. If he had found them, he would be alive. The point I'm making is that this wisdom from God helps us to navigate life and not give up on life even when things are not going our way. It is the wisdom to see new possibilities when doors seem closed and things are going against us. If we are going to break barriers, we have to be conscious of what people want in the future. There is a phone named Blackberry. In its time, it was the top phone. You didn't hear about iPhone, you didn't hear about Samsung. Because Blackberry, guess what? They remained stuck in their ways. They thought that their security was the best. Android came along and they looked down on Android. Now Blackberry is dead and Android run things. If we are going to push past barriers, you have to understand changes in life, technology, and use the academics, use the science to understand how people can get what they want and get it in a more convenient way. You must be aware of current developments. And I'm just going to leave some with you. Developments in the arena of sports. 
and how you need to study what's going on to be able to keep up. If you're going to push past barriers in your own life and as a college here at GC Foster, we have to have a vision of the future. Things are the way they are today, but by tomorrow, they will change. Look at what happened for the past two years. COVID-19 changed a lot of things. You don't know what will happen. We must be able to have a vision. If things change, what will we do? The vision of this college is for it to become a world-class training institution, producing excellent teachers, sports and recreational professionals to meet local, regional, and international demands. And we must, we must not forget that. If GC Foster College is going to meet international standards, it cannot remain the way it is, because things are changing. If you are going to attract people here, you know what is it people have overseas that we don't have here, which will keep them from coming here. You will have to think about the skills that people need, which you need to improve on. So when you leave here, don't stop reading. Don't stop learning. I think the college song says that. Ever learning. You must not reject knowledge. Some people feel as soon as you get the paper, that's it. But all the time, people in Jamaica have a saying that's a study ration beat education. That is, you can have the paper, but you don't have the study ration to apply what you have on the paper. And the more you read, the more you learn, is the better you will be able to do it. So GC Foster is going to achieve this. And if you as graduates are going to break barriers, you have to know some of the things which are happening. So what is going on now? The world is moving away from traditional sports. For example, cricket. T20 is the thing, and very soon we may have something else. Because the generation which we have now, they are not satisfied with sitting down for four days, watching much. They want things fast. So we have T20 where you lick six, lick six, six, six. Things happen fast. This is the generation that they call Gen what? Gen Z. The fast thing. Everything must happen quick. Truth is, don't think that people are going to go back to yesterday and sit down and wait for things to happen. This generation, they call it the Gen Z, because things are fast. So, even in our health, we're damaging our health because we want everything fast. Fast food, and nothing is wrong with that. But a lot of the fast food get us ill very fast. You going out there, you should develop things which can help people to eat correctly. You need to pass on knowledge. For example, those of you who study the diet and nutrition, and you are going to help people, massage or whatever else, you need to understand how the body functions. So for example, if I have high blood pressure and I am hypertensive, would you let me drink Gatorade? Would you tell me to drink a lot of Gatorade? No. Look on the label in Gatorade and look at the amount of sodium in it. 111. Sodium is salt. When you are hypertensive, they tell you don't take you need to be aware of what is happening. So when you go there, you can help people. So they will tell you it's good, but you have to know the science. You have to know the science. So we're moving away from the traditional sports. Even football. What? You prefer watch football. Everybody know about Man U and Inter and City. And City going win the league this year. City going win the league, unless something tragic happens. But we don't know about our local Jamaican teams. 
why these people faces all the like Premier League that take place on Monday night. How many of you follow it? Things are changing. And you have to be aware if you're going to be involved in sports and helping people to develop sports, you have to know what is it, what it is that people want and how to market it. The fast generation, they're not interested in the long games. They want things fast. So, what are we seeing? We're also seeing globalization. That the world is coming closer and closer to us. So we have international audiences. You see how people were vexed when they couldn't see Carifta games and pen relays and see GC Foster running at pen relays because we don't have any live stream. But people found ways to hack it and live stream because we want to see things fast. Everyone and everything is connected nowadays. And so what happened? The media is buying up rights so that they can control what is going on. You need to be aware of how to market sports. You need to understand the data and to study and to find ways to market yourself even as a college. To survive in this global world, you can't do it by yourself. You have to know the links and the connections to market your product, whatever it may be. So very soon a lot of local clubs, netball, football, won't be able to function because the private sector is giving less and less. People are looking more outside because they can have it on their phones. You don't have to go to stadium to pay for anything. To bear this in mind, you think about how you are going to attract an audience. Another big thing that is taking place, which is replacing the traditional sport, is what is called e-sport, electronic sport. It's becoming more and more popular. So you find instead of people going to play and exercise, they have virtual spaces, gaming lounges and so on, where they can come and play quickly. Are you aware of this and how prepared are you to deal with this? How prepared is GC Foster prepared to deal with this? You won't find people coming to a physical space to do a lot of things now. So, and this is being en en embraced by the new generation, the fast generation. You know, the speed at which things take place in this sport is, is really amazing. There are over, for example, 495 million viewers on eSport. When you have a sports day here, who will go? How do you market your product? The sports has raised over $1 billion and it has just started. You have top players and athletes spending as much as eight hours practicing the games they play in eSport. They don't come to a gym and they don't depend on coaches. They have personal coaches who teach them with the eSport. You have to be up to date with it. So if you are going to become a personal trainer, you have to have the equipment to train people with. It's a virtual world, so you don't have to have a building. You go where people are and take the knowledge with you. So these athletes, they come to these esports, electronic sports, they have trainer, they have nutritionists, and they train just as if though they were in a physical space. This is what is happening. And there's another thing, artificial intelligence. Where you don't depend on people. This is something that is taking over. You have machines now, you have the Peloton um, series of um, bikes and treadmills and then on one of these treadmills you can do exercise, aerobics, all kinds of things as if though you were in a virtual world so they can make you run around GC Foster Field 50 times and you are seeing it as if though you are doing it so people not going into a physical space are we here with these equipment? Do we have them so that 
people can utilize them. If you are going to attract people, you have to keep up with the times. So, with this artificial intelligence, they are using data and metrics to decide how fast a person will run. They put all kinds of electrodes on them and test them, and you have to interpret that data. How many of you are thinking of going into that field? That's a big thing. So they can look at muscle strength, body mass, and all of those things. Just put some little electrodes on them screen and they can tell you how fast that person will run. You see how many records are being broken? A pen relays the amount of records which were, I don't know what these young people eat in. Only young we can see. Friends, you have to keep in touch with what's going on. And one last thing, collaboration. going to massage parlors for therapy. People want things fast. I am a beneficiary of those here at GC Foster who've done massage therapy. Right now I'm standing here. I, if I sit down, I can hardly get up. I had therapists come from this college who are trained here. And they were able to come to my home and do my entire family. They use modern equipment and knowledge and they could explain to me what is happening to me. Where I would have gone to the doctor and spent a whole lot more money. But all I need is a little massage. I'm saying you need to think about teaming up, collaboration. Just as our GC Foster, we are not a university yet, but you can team up with UA and UTEC, work together. You can have a mobile um, massage therapy studio. Just a little car with your bed, buy a bed. Use the knowledge. You can buy some of these instruments online, the little electrodes and that do shock therapy. If you know how to use it, learn how to use it. Use the knowledge along with the sports, friends. As I close then, I ask you, how aware are you of what's going on? How prepared are you when you leave here to continue to think, to read, to keep in touch with what's going on, to collaborate? You can start a family business. Don't sit down and wait for people to get jobs for you. Go out there and create jobs with the creativity you have. You have fashion designers in here. Study body mechanics and how you can design suit and clothing. You don't just have to wear other people. This is why I say people like Elon Musk and Phil and all of them get rich off you. They make you believe that you need them. You can develop a product based on the knowledge you have here that others will want. But you have to believe in yourself. Sell yourself. So I challenge you to go out there, push past the barriers with the knowledge which you have received. Keep on learning by impacting the world with academics and sports. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you would agree with me on statements being highlighted in the delivery of our chaplain as he emphasized the whole aspect or the whole matter of importance of pushing past our barriers in an effort to positively impact the world through education and sports. At this moment of response, leaning on the everlasting arms, subsequent to which Robert Shaw will do the prayer of dedication. I'm going to invite us to stand, please. What a fellowship, what a joy divine.
What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. We thank you for its inception, for the vision of those who through the years have labored to bring it to this point, for the gift it is to this country. We thank you for the blessing it has been to the nation, using the men and women of caliber in various disciplines. We pray, God, that your continued blessing would be upon the principal, the academic staff, the board of governors, the entire GC Foster family, the body of students, the parents who support, that it will go from strength to strength in pushing past the barriers as academics and sport are emphasized and work together. We thank you for this batch of students who have come this far. We thank you for guiding them, for providing for their needs. Thank you for the knowledge they have gained and the opportunities that are open for them as they leave the walls of this place very soon. Open their understanding, grant them wisdom and vision that when doors seem closed, you will show them ways in which they can use the skills, the learning, the knowledge they've gained here. Not just for their own good, but for the good of others. We thank you for their parents and relatives who supported them, providing for them financially and otherwise helping them to reach this place. We commend them to you, God, as they go forth. Another step in the journey of their lives. Those who are fearful, grant them your peace. Those who are wondering what is next, open their eyes that they may see the tremendous possibilities. May they not see barriers, but may they see possibilities and solutions 
to overcoming such barriers. For those who remain in this institution, may they be committed to the academics so that they can use it to better the aspect of sports in the various disciplines. So we commend to you with thankful hearts each and every one who is here today. And may your grace, your mercy, and your peace rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much, I'm sure, students, that you would agree with me that you are looking awesome this afternoon. Is that so? Is that so? And I know Mr. Royal would agree that the team is looking wonderful. And as I said this morning to some of my friends, some from Clarendon on that side, and some, of, some of the ladies who are so miserable, you know, this would have been an awesome occasion. And boy, if some of you would just be the way you look today, this would be an awesome society. Amen? Put your hands together. And I know you are going to, I mean, cause your parents to feel just the same at the end of your journey. And as the chaplain, Reverend Shaw, emphasized, irrespective of what challenges are here, the important thing is for you to push past your barriers so that at the end of the day, you can see the impact that you would have created in a positive and realistic way. At this moment, I'm going to be, we're going to go back to normal scheduling. So I'm going to invite our the member of the board. I must at this time apologize for the absence of our principal. Mr. Maurice Wilson, who is unavoidably, unavoidably absent, as he has to be away on national duties. I must also apologize for the absence of our board chairman, Mr. Tolan, who is also unavoidably absent. So those persons are absent, but that's, even though they are not here, they are with us during this moment. At this time, I'm going to ask who they together for Ms. Sophia Deer, member of the board, she is the chairperson of the finance committee of the board. She's now going to be bringing us greetings on behalf of the board of management of the GC Foster College. And ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Ms. Sophia Deer. Luke 14, verse 48 says, to whom much is given, much is expected. Moderator, VP, Mr. Paul Beckford, guest speaker and chaplain, Reverend Luke Shaw, other members of the board, Principal Wilson, VP Williams, members of staff, students, parents, well-wishers, on behalf of the board of the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sports, good afternoon. To the class of 2022, I wish you all the best as you close this chapter of your life and begin a new one. I want to take some words from the school song and leave you with it. As you go forward, keep the excellence of learning in your everyday life and let the light of G.C. Foster shine with you always. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as she did say, to whom much is what? Expected and much is required. And she has done well, even being called upon at the last one. Put your hands together once more for our member of the from the GC Foster College. Ladies and gentlemen, just to
change the mood a bit, I'm going to ask now to, for you to relax yourself as one of our students, Ms. Candy Thomas, will now come to us with a dance. Put your hands together for Candy Thomas. I'm sure that you can give a bigger and better round of applause. And just as you were reminded, going forward you may fall. But the important thing to know is to do what? Get up again, brush off yourself, brush yourself off and 
move again. So rise up so you can push past your barriers and create that impact. And as we speak of rising up, I'm going to ask that we stand for a minute because last week we, the family of GC Foster would have been hit with the news that we had lost a member, a past member of staff. He was an active principal in the years known by Mr. Kenneth Gardner. So I'm going to ask us to stand for a minute of silence. Please, stand as we observe a moment of silence in his respect. Rest in peace and light to perpetually shine upon him. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a very beautiful evening. You know, graduates are valid in I'm going to ask you to do a favor before we move to the next item. You're going to turn to the audience sitting behind you. Turn to them and you're going to say to them, Thank you, parents, for all that you have been doing for us. Turn to them. I'm sure that you would appreciate. Oh, hey, hey, hey. You're going to sing them and you're going to tell them a, a very big thanks or to wherever they are and put your hands together, clapping and wonderful, wonderful. I am sorry for those who, if there's anybody here who doesn't have any parents, Royal, do, Royal, you have parents? I'm sure that Barnaby has parents. Okay, good. And I'm sure that Oshika has parents. So, thank you very much, parents, for coming out here to support your students, uh, or your children, rather, or your child. Your support means a whole lot. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, each student would have had a time, or the group would have had their times that they can reflect on having reached thus far. As the song says, we have come this far by faith. And each, there is a representative from each group that will be given a short reflection of the three, two, or four years, whatever it is, that they would have spent here. They will not be speaking on behalf of their group. I'm gonna be asking the first person from the associate degree in coaching, Oshika, will be coming to do that. Put your hands together for Oshika. After Oshika, we'll be having Ronaldo Franklin, the man from the Associate Degree in Fitness Massage and Instruction, and subsequent to that, we'll be having the Bachelor in Education. Moderator, Mr. Paul Beckford. Colon, other members of the board, principal, vice principals, lecturers, all members of staff, fellow valedictorians, parents, and all other invited gentlemen, a perpetual good afternoon. A perpetual good afternoon. I welcome you all to graduation story 2022. Don't, don't touch your mind. Let's start. Let's start. The motivational speaker, Zig Zagula, once said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Like small seeds sown, we all germinated here, one way or the other, in August 2019. Many of us today had our own aspirations in mind when we came here. Some of us came with a goal becoming coaches or sports professionals, while others simply wanted to get a taste of college life. Many people may not have known 
lead, thinking, boy, Makiambada. But I stand here today extending a hearty congratulations to us all. We have done it. As our states, Mensana Incapur Seno, a sound mind in a sound body. And with that, anything is possible. Fellow valedictorians, I salute you all. Thanks to our lecturers for in the right direction so that we can reach yet another milestone in life and fly on beautiful wings of success. Thank you for helping us prepare for our future so that we can help others prepare for theirs as sporting professionals. A special thanks who would shake our papers, saving some of us the trouble of crazy research, finding thousands of dollars. One of many, great one, big up yourself. Parents, your mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial support has brought us from the very start to where we are now. We want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to you for all your assistance and for bearing with us. We grumble about the hardship of college life. You've been with us long enough to watch your children reach the point where they will be able to live the life you and your forefathers imagined. The greatest gratitude is due to the Lord up above, our Father who art in heaven. We thank you for being with us throughout stressful times, late nights, hunger with little sleep. Fellow valedictorians, it's reasonable to say that we not only excel academically, but we also preserve through the ups and downs of our trips. The most significant of which was the COVID-19 pandemic. We altered not only how we learn, but also how we applied ourselves as sporting professionals. Most of us came across someone who we thought would be our worst nightmare, but nevertheless, it was just a sheep in wolf's clothing because he had a lot of passion about his male students doing well while his female students are keeping in line with the school rules. He would say, Girl, bikini, come here. Why your skirts are short? Or rather, Oi, man, you think, you think a five star hotel you're there? This is not a right. We know who that is. As the thing they call grub names start, no, sorry. Our grub masters were never easy on us, as the thing we call grub names fling in left, right, and center. It didn't matter if you were an elite, baller, or a driver. Just ensure you are present for a grub session with your big foot squeezed up in at the one tile where your school fee pay for. School fee. On the matter of school fee, this is one of the main reasons we were a few in numbers today. We were not even sure of making it thus far, as school fee was always a growing issue for college students. But here we are today, thanks be to God. We made it thus far with the nurture of members of staff like Miss Shana from Donga Kitchen, Miss very own Dar Mother, Mr. Senior, who is always on the go, but would spare some time to be a mentor to some. Students who... ...calling Miss Maxine and Miss Ita from a mile away, most of the times wanting nothing but just to say, Wagwan. There are times where we no, were not in the mood, tired and burdened from training from our different sporting disciplines. But there were some lecturers who did not stand for foolishness. Miss Anderson, Mr. Gale, Mr. Davis, Mr. Morgan, and I am assured there are many others, but there are just few who we highlight. When we look back, we should recall not only our difficulties, but also our positive experiences and life's lesson. We would have learned that believing in ourselves leads to success. And that is through the belief that we acquire consistency, self-discipline, and determination. We would have learned that people from all over the world requires adaptability, patience, and forgiveness. 
we learn that true friendship is defined by trust, kindness, and dependability. And it's true that we have formed strong bonds that will last the rest of our lives. Today represents the end of a chapter, but the start of a life that will require courage to create. As the famous quote said, the race is not for the swift, but who will endure, the, who can endure. I am proud, we are proud, to let the light of the only English-speaking English -speaking institution of its kind in the Caribbean shine. Remember, wherever you go, let the lights of GC Foster shine. Remember, we are the cream of the cap. The crop, I thank you. So I, I, am, I am really lost for words. I would have known and known Oshika for one thing. See your size? She eats a lot. And that's the only thing I, I could really make association with. Put your hands together once more for Ashika. I know that she would have represented our, our group very well. Mr. Man from Overseas, put your hands together for Ronaldo Franklin. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. I can't say I'm going to beat that speech that was just read. It was very wonderful. I applaud you. Um, the good? Yeah, it's the good. So I shall start with. So we made it. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2022. Well done, Fastonians. Like many others, I did not start this major knowing what would have been the outcome. But along the way, Along the way, I gained the love for massage and I show my fellow comrades have done the same. It was an opportunity to support my family and gain an education at the same time, so I went for it. As a student, along the way, we had regrets. We thought about quitting, we got, but we stuck with it. Did our work, and we are all here because of that. As she said, a sound mind in a sound body. I think it is important to note most came into this pro program prior experience or connection in the industry. A most fairly uncommon situation in a program where most students have family connection or previously worked, previously worked in the field themselves. Despite this, the lecturers, students have never made me feel like I shouldn't be here. Even with all these benefits, the most valuable part of being a first union are the people, the vibe, the energy, the constant support. First unions always come out to make noise no matter what sport. Having persons like Dema Williams, GB, who is our dorm warden, Miss T, who's always been there. As an international, it's hard to be in an island where you don't know who you're going to meet. But as Jamaicans, you guys have been very welcoming. Mr. Davis, my volleyball coach and program coordinator, a person who has a great amount of patience and understanding. Thank you. Uh, a well-known A well-known a well-known name throughout the massage in this college, Maureen William, Will, Maureen Dawson, my mentor, my role model, whose involvement and support have been instrumental to our success as massage students in, and the relation that we build between students and faculty 
is what made GC Foster College an amazing experience for me. This is a universal truth we all have to face, whether we want to or not. Everything eventually ends. As much as we look forward towards this day, I've always disliked endings. The last day of summer, the final chapter in a great book, parting ways with friends, but endings are inevitable. Leaves fall, you close the book, you say goodbye. Today is one of those days for us. We say goodbye to everything familiar, everything comfortable. We're moving on because we are leaving. We're moving on, but because we are leaving, it hurts. Some people are as much a part of us no matter what. They are our solid drum, our night star, a small voice in our head that will be with us always. God made it possible to see through all the challenges and come out and come out to them, come out of them stronger and better for all those for all those blessings. We the massage ther therapy fitness students are sincerely grateful to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just to let the parents know that, you know, we have at least six to seven countries being represented here for in, in terms of our international students, and he is one of such. Put your hands together once more for the associate's degree in fitness and instruction. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move to the third and final which is a Bachelor in Teacher Education, and that will be done by Christopher Gibbon and company. Put your hands together for representation from the Bachelor in Teacher Education. Mr. Colin Virgo, Vice Chairman of the Board of Governors at the GC Foster College. Ms. Sophia Deer, Chairperson of the Board's Finance Committee. Reverend Luke Shaw, our College Chaplain. Principal, Mr. Maurice Wilson, Vice Principal of Academics, Mr. Gibbs Williams. Vice Principal of Administration, Mr. Paul Beckford. Principal Lecturers, Lecturers, Guests, Auxiliary, administrative and ancillary staff, family members, friends, first audience, my fellow graduates, a pleasant afternoon. Britannia and I are greatly appreciative for the opportunity to stand here to represent the graduating class of 2021 and We have just created a lifeline. At the exception of the I would say that we have been the characters in some chapters of our individual book of life. How does that mean for us? It means each and every one of us had somewhat to influence in our respective life story. The beginning of our journey. Fellow graduates, we started out counting stars at the beginning of our journey here. 
If you should look around you and look among yourselves, you would see that not only is there one pretty star or two pretty stars, but indeed, we are all pretty, pretty stars. Some of us may think that we made a mistake by coming to college, especially during our first week. Having the seniors banging on our dorm rooms was probably one of the worst feelings in first year. Some of us complained bitterly. Lord, you can't imagine me really left me out coming after this. The people really awake me about my bed them hours, yeah? Grub session left a bitter taste in some of our mouths. While for some, it was just all fun and jokes. Each group session was filled with some mysterious tasks for us to complete, from blowing out light bulbs to singing in a locker, which was a substitute for a jukebox, to begging the security guards for our work, to filling water bottles with our hands, and to counting green leaves. Who remember the green leaves, the green leaves song? One green leaf, two green leaves, three green leaves. Let us not forget that we were given some of the hideous yet hilarious grub names. We're talking about grub names like Grubbess Muslim. And let's not forget Grub Boy who trim him. Trim him, who trim him, who trim him. Thank you. Grub sessions not only prepared us for the late nights and early mornings we had to be up completing assignments, but also helped us to realize that in everything, even the most difficult of tasks, we could find some form of amusement. Our journey here has not been easy. Mensana in Kapoor Sano, a sound mind in a sound body, is the mother of this institution. If it were not for our strength and resilience, some of us wouldn't be of sound mind today. We, had all, we had all have our unique challenges throughout our tenure here at GC Foster College. However, despite all those challenges, we were able to rise above all the adversities. First year was probably our easiest year. It was merely enjoying the perks of college life. On campus parties, concerts, getting to know each other, forming relationships. However, as we passed throughout the years, it became more and more difficult to survive here as a college student. Chapter two, be resilient to diverse challenges. Now, I hope not to break our way to college. Don't move the front. Yes, the front that we have to put in the burner and from one end to just this coffin extension at one hour long minute. It was at the beginning of this journey that we were going expecting lives and expectancies and being prepared to undertake the justice uncomfortable situations. No, we started out on a positive note. However, we were facing some difficult choices. While some class, we had to remind ourselves not to go to the people who would not swim. Students, 
something tells me that you might see this again. I don't know where you might see it, but something tells me that is on the gym floor. So word to the wife. And we don't have to call that name because that lecturer knows himself. And he 
said, no man. And she said, that is the thing. In this world, in this life, we like to seek validation. And you don't need to seek validation from the world. You need validation from yourselves. So therefore, when you step into a room, graduates, There is nothing basic about you. And I will, and I will say this to you, my fellow custodians. Be bold. Be different. Now, graduates, as you venture into the world of work, I want to challenge you to raise the bar. Let's aim to find your purpose over your job or a career. Utilize the skills and the knowledge garnered here you forward. We are going to go into spaces that doesn't care about your GPA that you graduated with. Own your greatness. Keep the excellence of learning in your mind. Ask yourself and remember that you are uniquely different. And I want to encourage you to be kind to your fellow colleagues. The person sitting to your right, the person sitting to your left, may just be the fun of the institution that you're trying to be employed at. And I end this chapter by saying, don't be like that bow tie guy. And if you remember nothing today from both of us, please remember, do not play small. Chapter 4, Gratitude. To our lecturers, some of whom we have shared a love-hate relationship, because boy, we don't no try, you know, and we don't ask if we don't no try, we don't no Thank you for helping us to shape our minds as we prepare for a world that is pregnant with promise. As much as we were flooded with assignments and deadlines week after week, we were made better students and overall better individuals. To Mr. Ambrose, who taught me an that verted my creativity. He said, You are a creator. So create and design the life that you want to live. To Mr. Anderson, one of the most misunderstood we would have understood that you only want. Thank you for the opportunity that I had said yes to. And that opportunity was a day here when she asked me if I could use the camera. And I said yes. And I went to her and learned how to use the camera. And had I, I had no idea that that moment is the trajectory of my life and created purpose in me. To Mr. Louis, who steered me in the back and put me on the shoulder and to me, you are going to become a great young man. Landscaping and remind me that we can't run away from work. It will always be there. To Mr. Dimson, gave me hope to inspire should I decide to stay in the classroom as a profession? Mr. Burke, who almost made me believe that I am doing too much, but instead made me remember that what I my story from being just an idol and the boy who started college with just $2,000 to amassing over $900,000 in scholarship and is recognized by a Victoria of Jamaica to the person I am today and to take up space wherever I go. And lastly, his hard work is something I have admired. He showed me the essence of walking into your God-given purpose. To the administrative, ancillary, and auxiliary staff, we owe you an eternal debt of gratitude. Your hard work of completing our paperwork, preparing our food, 
cleaning the different areas on campus and keeping us safe over the years is greatly appreciated. To the parents, family members, friends who have played a tremendous role in ensuring we made it past some of the most difficult times as students. We thank you for your contribution. Your support, whether it was financial, emotional, or otherwise, was instrumental in us being able to say we have made it to our final year. Graduates, once again, we say congratulations. Big up class like 4A. Big up class like 4B. Big up class like 4C. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for gentlemen for those reflections. Please put your hands together once more for the three groups: fitness and massage, and coaching, and the bachelor in teacher education. Earlier on, the speaker would have alluded to technology and advancing in technology. Ladies and gentlemen, I did mention that our principal unavoidably is absent today, but at this moment we are now going to be joining him as he presents to us his marks from wherever he is. Our principal, Mr. Maurice Wilson, put their hands together for him because I'm sure that wherever he is, he is watching and now he will be, we will now be listening to his Remarks. Mr. Chairman, Deputy Chairman of the Board of Governors, Colin Virgo, other members present, good afternoon. It is with my absolute pleasure and privilege to welcome parents, students, staff, and invited guests who have taken the time out of their busy schedule to be present at GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport Valedictory Service. I welcome you to a great college, a college with an enviable history of producing world-class athletes and sport administrators. I welcome you to a beautiful green campus, the campus of GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, located on 44 acres of land in Spanish Town, Jamaica. Described as an oasis, blooming, growing, and impactful and impacting lives. I welcome you to the home of a college with the potential to be a full fledged university college with its own charter to grant degrees at the bachelor's and graduate levels. I welcome you to a college whose recent 2020 to 2025 strategic plan is being enacted and whose core values of excellence, professionalism, commitment, integrity, accountability, flexibility are manifested in the college operations. Deputy Chairman, it is indeed a pleasure to say on behalf of the college's administration, congratulations. Congratulations to our students who have endured and lasted the journey in very difficult times. Congratulations to you students for following the COVID protocols through two difficult years of the pandemic. Congratulations on operating as a modern day, as modern day professionals, for students equipped, equipped with the modern content and mastering complex physical skills that are imparted to young minds. As we reflect on the theme of pushing past barriers impacting the world through academics and sports, I am proud to say that we have been fulfilling this mandate, not only with words, but direct action. It is my responsibility to justify the theme and inform the audience of the accomplishments of our beloved institution. 
please listen keenly to a number of did you knows. Did you know that Usain Bolt, the fastest man the world has ever seen, massage therapist Everett Edwards and high school coach Dwight Barnett were trained and graduated from G.C. Foster College. Sean Kecker, therapist for the second fastest man of all times, Johan Blake, was also trained at the college and is now working with some of the fastest athletes in the world out of Florida. I asked the question, are we not pushing past the barriers and impacting the world? Did you know that the technical director of track and field, the West Indies fitness trainer, the volleyball technical director, two former Sunshine Girls coaches, and the reggae boys fitness instructor are all presently employed by the college. Did you know that? The institution has assessed the marketplace and continues to build out contemporary programs to meet the needs of the society, such as an associate degree in coaching, an associate degree in sports massage and fitness, and a bachelor in coaching and sport administration. In addition to our bachelor's in education and master in, master's in physical education and sport. Did you know that most of the coaches of the high school teams at Boys and Girls Champs are Fostodians, GC Foster graduates? And when we think of the word impact at Boys and Girls Champs and even at Carifta, we think of schools such as Lacovia, New Forest, Spot Valley, Port Antonio. These institutions have made an impact because of GC Foster College graduates. This is in line with our strategic plan initiatives for our college athletes to hone their skills and realize their full potential. Finally, during the pandemic, the institution was impactful in leading the way in, host, in the hosting of a number of world-class webinars and symposiums. One of the webinars examining the sustainability of Jamaica's sports COVID and beyond. The other, pathway to an elite performance involving several world-class personalities. For example, Dr. the Honorable Glenn Mills, QBC Globe in one of the world's most successful sports agent, the Honorable Mike Fennell and Dr. Gwyn Jones. For students, I am now charging you to be impactful in your actions in all the areas that you have been trained. Your impact can change lives in a positive, and positive way and ultimately lead to Jamaica becoming a first world country. I want to thank the Board of Management, especially the Development Committee that has been instrumental in giving oversight in creating modern infrastructural changes at the college. For example, the changing out of windows, the building of new offices and gazebos, refurbishing the cafeteria, and with a swimming pool, yes, a swimming pool, to be refurbished and a new dormitory to be built. I am imploring you students to continue to improve on the impact that GC Foster has made in Jamaica and in extension of the world. As part of that, I also want you to look forward and consider the future and the positive impact which your newly gained qualifications and skills can have on the built out environment and even more importantly, on the lives of people who live, work, and play within it. As the author, Rochelle E. Goodrich said, you are here to make a difference, to either improve the world or worsen it. And whether or not you con consciously choose to, you will accomplish one or the other. I want to thank you very much and have a good afternoon.
And thank you very much, sir. Oh, well, I, 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 he's not hearing us, right? But um, thank you very much, our principal. I'm sure that he is watching and hearing us. And thank you for listening so attentively. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, parents, you will now be blessed with an item by the valedictorians. Put your hands together for the valedictorians.
Thank you very much. Put your hands together once more for the goo. Awesome. There's no giving up. All right, so that was it for the group. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have promised, not to keep you from for too long because I know that some of you have traveled from Tanya, from four. You know, I, I, I know that they have, they have traveled from Clever would have said she left her house from 3 a.m. this morning and she didn't reach here until after 12. Right, Clever so I, I, I know exactly how the distance is. At this moment, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be asking that we you those two reminders. After we, have, we are finished here, the photographer is asking you to march and you're going to assemble on the step so you can get your final group picture. So do not scatter yourself all over the place before he's able to get that. And subsequent to that, you're, you're going to ask that you guide your parents, you go with your parents and relatives to the cafeteria for some refreshments. So those, I know some people will not forget that. Right, Oshika, I know you won't forget that. Uh, and uh, and um, Mr. Lester. So make sure you take your parents to the cafeteria. Right, Mr. Beer? Good. So Mr. Bernard Burton will be coming to us now with the vote of thanks. And following this, we'll be moving to our college song, then the benediction and the national anthem will be played. Good afternoon, everyone. It, would, it is with esteemed pleasure I'm here to propose a vote of thanks. I want to say all protocols observed. I want to use this momentous occasion with our first valedictory service after what we have experienced for two years. So I want you to give yourselves a round of applause for being first. I want you to thank I want to thank all the persons who would have um, extended efforts in making this um, event a success. Highlighting Mark Hendricks, who would have um, dealt with the decorations, and Miss Audrey Thompson. I want you to extend your a round of applause to them, please. I would also like to thank Mr. Paul Beckford, Mrs. Walsh, and all those who would have been exclusively involved in the planning and organization of the valedictory service. <laughs> Additionally, I want to, to ask the persons at the back, the parents, the well-wishers, I'm asking you to stand, please. And these are some of the most important persons these are the persons why we are having a voluntary service today. I want you, the graduates, to clap your parents, to clap your well-wishers. Without you, um, I would say majority of them wouldn't have been here today because as some of the students highlighted, a number of the reasons would have been financial. And as I can see, Majority of them are depending on you, and I want to thank you for that. All right, so um, I want to finally close by thanking all the persons who took their time out to come and spend time with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Burton. And as he mentioned the parents, you know, parents, I don't know about the students or the, the children, but really and truly, I really do appreciate you because I know the sacrifice that some of you, or even most of you have made and have been making. Isn't that so, parents? You have been making some serious sacrifices for these kids to be here, or these young people to be here. Some of you sell the last goat or the last cow and the last pig. And I know less than I know, you know, and, and, and you have made some serious sacrifices. So once again, Parents, we really, really appreciate your students. Put your hands together once more for your parents because we really love them, we really appreciate them, and we really, really acknowledge the sacrifices that they have made. And I want you, students, to make your parents proud. Make them the proudest parents that they can be. You promise me? 
Promise me? No, I, do. I didn't hear that. Promise me? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. At this time, I'm going to ask you, students, to stand as we sing the college song, Keep the Excellence of Learning in Your Mind. Yes, Mr. Barnaby, you're going to lead the song for us? After two, one, two. the excellence of learning in your mind let the light of Jesus foster ever Just remain standing. I'm going to invite the rest of us to stand as we do the benediction. And this will be followed by the playing of the national anthem. Let's stand for the benediction. Now, may the peace of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. As you go, may the peace of God go with you, guard, guide, and protect you to your different place of abode. And we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you very much. As the, re the recession is done, I'm going to ask the parents, family members, just to remain seated as the valedictorians will recess. And remember, you are an assembly on the front steps for the final photograph. Thank you very much for being here and have yourselves a very wonderful afternoon.